In today's machine learning video, we're going to be covering the Naive Bayes algorithm and how we can implement this in Python with the help of the scikit-learn library. Now, this is going to be a classification algorithm, and it's based off of the Bayes theorem of conditional probability. Now, what this theorem states is that all independent variables are actually completely independent, which essentially means that they are going to be unrelated to each other. So think of the different columns within a data frame. There's no relation between the two. Now, some real world applications where this algorithm is pretty popular in is something like facial recognition and also weather patterns. And there's actually three different types of naive Bayes algorithms out there that you can use within scikit-learn. But in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on Gaussian. In fact, we're gonna be using this Gaussian algorithm to predict if Pearl Jam, a famous rock band out of Seattle, sells out a concert or not. With that in mind, let me jump on my computer right now and let's start coding. All right, let's get started. Like other videos, import pandas as pd shift and enter, runs a cell and brings in a brand new one. Now we're gonna declare a data frame df equals, and we're gonna bring in a CSV, and we'll explain how the CSV works in a second. But so we're gonna put pearl jam tour to dot CSV, and then this CSV it doesn't work properly, so I have to add in an encoding. So encoding equals unicode underscore escape like this. And our data frame should work now. And all right, so we have our data frame over here. Okay, so let me explain how this works. Uh, Pearl Jam goes on tour all across the world, and we're building out a classification problem. It's a binary one, right? I uh, sold out either zero or one in a city. Now, realistically, there's probably a ton of data that goes into if a concert sells out and Pearl Jam pretty much sells out every concert that they uh, play at. But in this example, I'm gonna assume that they don't. Uh, so I just have a few other things over here. So first off, we have the city population. I actually generated these through chat GTP. I said, put different, um, like I said, like 42 different values for city population. And I just threw some over here. Then we take a look at continents. So North America, Europe, North America, South America, and Asia, pretty much where Pearl Jam tours quite a lot. Then we have our venue capacity. So again, something that I completely auto-generated, anything from 5,000 to pretty much I think like I put 35 or 40,000 in there. Yeah, 40,000 because we have a 39,100 over here. And then I asked for it to have two zeros at the end. So that's why we have numbers that are like this for the venue capacity, day of the week. So. Pretty much the same thing, right? I just asked chat GDP Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like all generated over here through my CSV, uh, multiple concerts. So this is what I kind of generate myself. Uh, sometimes a band like Pearl Jam will play uh, multiple arenas two days in a row, even three, four, five days in a row sometimes, um, depending on, you know, if they're doing a residency in a city. So in this instance, right, like this one, since city population is the same, right, they played multiple days. Over here, the same, multiple days. Over here, the same, uh, which they just did on the recent tour, which, by the way, I hope they visit Florida soon. I have not seen Pearl Jam yet. I have seen Eddie Vedder, though. So I'm in Vegas, and it was an awesome show. Regardless, uh, we have sold out over here, which most of these are going to be sold out. And to be honest with you, kind of randomize the ones and zeros on here. So we're probably not going to get the most accurate result with this model, um, but... I would hope at least we get over a 50% on this side of things. But yeah, so maybe I should have engineered, sold out a little bit better overall based off a of city population and then uh, if there's multiple concerts or not. But why not? This is a good example for you guys uh, to learn how this specific model works. So with that said, uh, one thing that you should know is pretty much all machine learning models you can't have text, right? So we got to change North America and also day of the week. And I'm just going to do dummies over here within pandas. And there's a few different methods that you could also use. I mean, uh, depending on the categorical information, you can use one hot encoder or also ordinal encoder. Uh, but this version is actually pretty simple. And I'm not going to be building out any like real pipelines in this video. So we're going to go the lazy way. So we're going to do pd.get dummies. And then over here, we're gonna call our data frame. And then we're gonna put continent. And then also we're gonna put day of, actually I think in this one, I put day of week like that, which make sure you put underscores, but I 
accidentally put spaces in here when I first built out this CSV. Uh, but I think that's what we're going to put over here. And let's see how this DF2 looks like just to show you. Okay, great. So this is working properly. So essentially how these dummy variables work is if you go back over here, right? This is continent North America. So we're going to have zero for Asia, zero for Europe, but then we have a one for North America, zero for South America, right? Day a week, this is a Monday. So we have a one over here, zero for everything else. I'm just good exactly uh, what I specifically wanted. Now this is exactly the same thing that one hot encoder does, right? Uh, builds out brand new columns and it's a zero or one right across the board. So this is exactly what we want. Only problem is if you go back to original data frame, right? We had city population and then also our capacity, multiple concerts and sold out. And well, to be honest with you, if we go down over here, all that data is missing. We can scroll over and uh, we just have a bunch of zeros and ones. So we need to combine these two data frames, right? Because we still have our original data frame over here and we have DF2. Uh, well, you can actually do this pretty easy. We're going to concat both of these together. So let's do that right now. And we'll just say this is DF3. So we're going to do a pd.concat. And then over here, we'll throw in DF and then also DF. Two, and then we'll have over here axis equals one. I do apologize for the dogs barking outside if you can hear them on the video. Um, but now we have DF3 over here, just to show you what DF3 looks like, right? We have all this information over here, but now we can drop continent and then on also day of week. So pretty easy thing that we could do. I'm just gonna name this as DF4 and then just throw over here DF3.drop. And then over here, we're going to throw in our continent and then put a comma over here and then we'll put day of week and then we'll put over here axis equals one, boom. And then we should have DF4 like that and check it out. So we no longer have any categorical information. We have our city population, venue capacity, and then we have all this that's now either zeros or ones just depending on what was in this original data frame over here. Uh, so our information is going to be looking really good. Now what we should do is define our X and our Y before we end up splitting up our data. So let's do that, right? So we're going to have a capital X and then we're going to say X equals and we're going to do our classic df4.drop. And in this instance, right, we're going to drop sold out because that's our target. So we're going to say sold out like this Again, I apologize for the spacing should have just had underscores at the end and we're going to say axis equals one now we have our capital x now we can have our lowercase y uh, so y is going to be pretty simple right y equals df4 and then you're going to put over here in sold out right and now we have our x and y so now that we have our x and y defined we can actually throw in here train test split so if you've been following this series, super familiar with it. If not, no worries. And I hope you are enjoying your first machine learning algorithm. So we're going to just go over here from SK learn the model selection. We're going to import in train test split. And you'll be using this in almost all your models. Just this used to scare me originally when I started learning, um, but honestly, and you get used to it pretty fast, right? So X train, X test, Y train, Y test equals train test split. Go in here, X and our Y test underscore size equals 0 0.2. And then we're going to do a random state equals 10. And I hope someone knows the reason why I put that random state of 10 but that'll be a little Easter egg for this video. But regardless, right, our X and Y, we define those above. We have our test size. So 80% is gonna be used to train the model, 20% for testing. That's in the decimal form 0 0.2. So just multiply that out and random state. So that way you guys can replicate the exact results. And if you want this original data over here, I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll just probably throw it on my GitHub and you can download it. And I do need to up upload all these coding videos to GitHub as well promise you that's going to be a little bit of future project I've been working on uh, updating some of my Twitter stuff right now. But once that backlog is cleared, I promise I'll throw this up on GitHub. You guys can copy this code. All right. So now we can bring in our algorithm. So 
from SK Learn is phase over here. We're gonna do import, and for this time we're gonna just do a Gaussian, Gaussian, and then NB like this. Okay, spelled everything correctly. That's always a good thing. I do make a lot of typos. So GNB equals, and then we're just gonna call this over here, All right? And now what you have to do, just like every other machine learning model, is we are gonna fit our data. So you always fit with your train set. So your X train, right? And also your Y train. I don't know why I copied this, but we're having fun with that. And boom, there we go. Looks so basic right now without a pipeline or any parameters, but don't worry. We're gonna show you parameters in a second on this side of things, but no pipelines, but we will show parameters. So here we go on this side of things, pretty easy. Let's do a Y prediction e also. So Y prediction equals GNB predict. We'll throw in our X test in here, okay. So now we have also our Y prediction. And the reason why we wanna do that is we're gonna do a classification report. Now there's a lot of metrics over here that you really could be taking a look at. I'll just throw this in here really quick. And I do need to make a whole video on like confusion matrix and also a classification report, but that'll be in the future, All right? Okay. And then I just always print these out. So print. I'll throw in here like that, and then throw in here your Y test, and then also your Y prediction, right? And we can see some of our different scores. So our precision over here, right? Overall, our aggregated 0 0.74, recall 0 0.56, our F1 score 0 0.63. And yeah, not a lot of data, right? So there's that side of things. And then we can also see our score so you can just do GNB that score. Then you can just put over here both your train and test. So we'll do train first, right? I train. So pretty horrible score there. Like I said, I just threw kind of random numbers all across over here. So I didn't expect it to be that great. And um, test is right about the same. So not a very accurate model. I would not be applying this. But yeah, this model was not the most accurate with how this ended up working on the Pearl Jams tour. But I also wanna show you really quick how you can add in a parameter. So we'll say add in parameter like this. So this is actually pretty easy. So the first thing that we're gonna do is a param grid. Param grid. And I have a full video on hyperparameter tuning. So I'm not gonna go in full depth on how that works, but we're, we're gonna take a look at var smoothing. So it helps avoid kind of zero probabilities and also smooth out uh, the estimates. So let's take a look at that. So just do var smoothing. And then I looked this up also on Stack Overflow, kind of just some of the different values that people put in over here. And honestly, when you do like hyperparameter tuning, I would recommend that you take a look at some of the documentation in scikit-learn and also you take a look at Stack Overflow because I guarantee you someone has the same exact question that you've had before. And we actually get some really, really small values and I'm just gonna copy and paste those because I know if I don't, I'm gonna make an error. So yeah, very small like this over here. And now we can do a grid search, uh, but we do have to import this in. So we'll just throw that in over here. So from sklearn.model selection, import grid search like that and let's uh, build out our grid search. So we're going to say grid search equals grid search CV. First thing we're going to have to do is put in our model. It's already called GNB over here. So let's put GNB. Then we have to call in our param grid, which made it super easy. Our param grid is right there. Uh, cross validation, we're gonna say that's gonna be equal to five. We're gonna take a look at accuracy as our scoring. So there's a lot of different ways that you can score your model. I'm just gonna put accuracy like that, pretty easy. And then at the very end, I'm gonna say n underscore jobs equals negative one. 
Hey, that has been called. Now we have to fit our data. So just like above, we had a fit, right? This time we have to fit over here. So fits, we're going to X train and then also uh, Y train like this. Now we have our grid search over here, right? A little bit more this time. So we can see how everything is built out. You can see we just added a little bit level of complexity. And then if you want to see essentially what the best parameters are, so pretty easy, right? You can just go over here, grid search dot best underscore params like this. Okay, so our best was verse moving and it's in scientific notation. And lastly, if we want to see our best score, if we can just copy this over here and this is probably going to be pretty awful. And it really is 0 0.4857. So just to recap kind of what we did in this video is first we threw in some data over here on a Pearl Jam Tour 2, kind of very generalized random data that I threw over here. And then we changed all the categorical information on this side of things, right? And because of that, we had two different data frames. I can catted them together. So we have this one over here as a data frame four. Then I declare X in our Y. So that way our Y is our target. X is going to be everything else. That's why I dropped it. Our axis equals one. Then I split the data between X train and also X test, Y train and also Y test with this over here. Then I brought in our model, right? I declared our model over here, our fit our data between X train and also Y train. I made a prediction on this. So Y prediction equals GNB dot predict. Just take a look at a quick classification report just to see how overall the model performed. Again, I don't have a lot of data and this data is not very accurate. Then we took a look at our score. We can just throw it in here really fast. If you want to add in a parameter, build out a parameter grid. Now this version that I use, the Gaussian NB only has one parameter, which is var smoothing, which is very, very tiny values. And I found those values uh, from just searching Stack Overflow. Then if you want to see which parameter works the best, uh, the exact metric for it, right? Grid search CV, fit our data just like above, and then best params, and then also our best score. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel as it does help share the videos to other users on the platform. Now, if you're looking for another classification algorithm to learn, I really recommend you take a look at Support Vector Machines, the full video right over here. It's part of my SciKit Learn machine learning playlist.